The theory behind today's lesson is based on something called the unit circle and this is an example of a unit circle here. It's called the unit circle because it has a radius of 1 so you'll see it crosses, it's been drawn on a set of axes here, it crosses the x and y axis at points with um, the coordinates shown here. So the radius throughout is 1 um, and the center of the, um, the circle is at 0, 0 and that's quite key. So we draw a unit circle um, and then uh, somewhere on the unit circle we put a point which is, is here called C and that point will have coordinates X, Y. It could have any coordinates X and Y. And we can create a triangle by dropping, dropping a vertical line down from C to hit the X axis to be perpendicular to the X axis at right angles and then draw along the Y axis like that. So um, We've got a right angle triangle here, and we're interested in this angle theta, the one here at the origin, marked in green with the theta. So this is a right angle triangle, um, and we can write down all the sides. The hypotenuse is the radius of the circle, so this is the hypotenuse, and it must equal one unit. This side along the bottom, the horizontal side, is equal to the x coordinate of the point C, so that's going to be the x coordinate and the vertical length is going to be the y-coordinate. Now because we've got a right angle triangle we can talk in terms of the basic trigonometry ratios that you've learnt in Sokotoa and we can refer to these two sides as adjacent and opposite. Since we're considering the angle at the centre, mark theta, this side is the adjacent, the horizontal one, which is equal to x and the vertical side is the opposite, which is equal to y. And what we're going to do is change the point C as it moves around the circle and record different values for the opposite and adjacent sides of this triangle. Of course, the hypotenuse will always be 1. And we're going to use those values to work out our trigonometric ratios. So, for example, sine theta, well, we know that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So, in this case, the opposite side is y and the hypotenuse is 1. So, sine theta should equal y. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and the adjacent side is x, so that's going to be x over 1, which is just x. So x should give us the value of cosine theta. And then tan theta, of course, is, is opposite over adjacent, and that will be the opposite side is y, the adjacent side is x, so that's y over x. Now we need to be careful here because we need to make sure that x is not equal to 0, and that's going to affect how you collect your data. You mustn't have x equal to 0 because, of course, we can't divide by 0, so that will be a problem there. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this point C around the edge of the circle in both directions, and we're going to get angles of theta from 0 up to 360 degrees. As we drag the point C counterclockwise or anticlockwise further around the circle this angle is going to increase at the center um, it's going to start off at zero if c is at the point one zero uh, and as we move counterclockwise from there it's going to increase past 90 degrees it will be 90 degrees at this point it will go up to 180 degrees by the time it gets around here 270 degrees by the time it gets to the bottom and 360 degrees or which is the same as zero degrees by the time it gets back to one zero. Okay, so we're going to have a demonstration of how to collect that information and then where to record it and what to do with the results. So here's our unit circle again uh, and we're going to be able to move this point C around the outside and as you, we do that you'll notice that the angle at the origin between the hypotenuse and the uh, adjacent side, the x-axis changes, uh, and the x and y coordinates change. Now, these are set to three decimal places, and it's a good idea to record your results to three decimal places um, for the x and y coordinates. The angles uh, probably don't need to be to three decimal places. Probably um, one decimal place will be enough. Um, the software here sets everything to the same thing, so I haven't been able to change that. Now, what you need to do is to collect data 
um, at every 10 degree interval approximately starting from about zero degrees but you can't actually get exactly zero degrees um, and in fact this is uh, snapping so it might be quite difficult to do that um, but we can get a small angle if, and, and get the smallest one that you can uh, and then we're going to collect it every 10 degrees now don't spend ages uh, trying to get exactly 10 degrees as long as you're close to 10 degrees that's fine 10.147 is okay so at this point we would record the angle 10.147 the y coordinate 0 0.176 and the x coordinate 0 0.984 so at each stage you're going to be collecting those three values the angle the y coordinate and the x coordinate then drag the point round to about 20 degrees to create a 20 degree angle again don't spend ages trying to get it exactly 20 degrees as long as it's 20 point something or 19 point something that will probably be enough and again record the angle the y value and the x value drag your point c round to about 30 degrees same thing record those three values so you're going to keep doing that at 10 degree intervals up through 40 50 60 etc degrees until you've gone all the way around the circle again recording the x-axis and the y-axis at each point now be careful though because we talked before about how the x-axis can't be zero the x-coordinate can't be zero so be careful when you get to the points where x is close to zero to make sure that x isn't exactly zero you need to make sure that x is slightly different notice once we go past 90 degrees into this area of the graph your x-coordinate will be negative so make sure you record the negative value of the x-coordinate when you get down at the bottom x and y will both be negative so you need to record both coordinates as being negative values and in the bottom right section of the graph the x-coordinate will be positive again but the y-coordinate will be negative so make sure you set the y-coordinate to be negative so do that record about 36 results all the way around the circle uh, and each time record three values the angle the y-coordinate value and the x-coordinate value. As you collect the data you should be recording it in a spreadsheet and you'll have been given a copy of a spreadsheet something like the one you can see on the screen here. You'll notice in column A that the angle has been entered, in B the opposite side which is the y-coordinate and in C the adjacent side which is the x-coordinate. In D it's the hypotenuse which is always 1 so that can be filled in in advance. Now notice that these are given two, three significant figures but sometimes the software has rounded them. You can change that if you want. If you want to just um, click in that column and you can get increase and decrease decimal places here. So we can put that so that everything is the three decimal places and we could set that uh, for both columns if we wanted to. So you can change that if you, if you prefer the way it looks. And again, notice at the angle, I've recorded them at 10 degree intervals here, 30, 40, 50. But as you collect the information, retype the angle to be the actual angle you used, not the one that's given on the spreadsheet so far. So these are given at 10 degree intervals as a reminder to enter the data at that point. But type in the actual angle that you recorded on the GeoGebra software. Once you've got all your points all the way down, if we scroll down, um, you can see it goes down to 360 degrees in row 38 of the spreadsheet. So once you've collected all those points, you can then calculate the sine, cosine and tan of the angle using the rule Sokotoa. So let's click in cell E2 and work out the sine. To tell the spreadsheet software that you want to do a calculation, you must start by typing an equal sign. Then we're going to put in the uh, ratio for sine of an angle which is opposite over hypotenuse so click on the number for opposite the division sign is the forward slash and then click on the hypotenuse in D2 so that's B2 divided by D2 do not type the actual values in that's going to take you a long time and it loses the power of the spreadsheet by doing that so just type equals B2 divided by D2 and press enter and that tells us that sine of 1.087 degrees is about 0 0.019. Don't do the rest of the column yet. Go across to the next column and do cosine. So equals to show it's a calculation. Click on C2 for adjacent. Forward slash for the division sign. D2 for the hypotenuse. Press enter. For tangent, or tan, click on cell C2 equals for the calculation 
b2 for opposite, forward slash for divide, c2 for adjacent, press enter. Okay. Once you have those three values, you can then, you don't have to do that every time for every row, select the whole column and this should work if you hover over that little blue square in the corner of your selection, your cursor will change and if you double click on that, it will fill the formula all the way down. Now notice that it's given me errors and zeros because I haven't got data below row 4. But if you have all that data, it will give you those values and create for you a finished spreadsheet showing the sine, cosine and tan of each angle. The next thing you're going to do is graph those results. So we'll have a look at how to do that. So this spreadsheet shows a completed set of results now uh, with the angles starting at uh, 1 and then 10, 20 and going all the way down to about 360 degrees and for each one we've recorded the opposite side, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side. Okay, And then we've used the formula that we showed before to calculate sine, cosine and tan. The final thing is to create the graphs of these functions. Now before you do that, just check that you've got the uh, negative values correct in columns B and C. So we talked before about how when the angle got above 90 degrees, the Y coordinate, sorry, the X coordinate, the adjacent side will become negative. So make sure it's negative then until you get up to 270 degrees again. And the Y coordinate will be negative once you've got above 180 until you got to past 360. So note, make a note to uh, just check those and make sure that you've got them uh, negative and positive as they should be. So um, we now need to graph that. And we need to graph the angle against sine and then the angle against cosine and the angle against tan. And I'm going to show you how to do that stage by stage. So first of all, select the column with the angle in and you need to click from the top and drag all the way down um, and you'll see if you drag down you'll get to uh, row 38 360 degrees. You then need to uh, get the column with the sine values in as well that's column E. Now I'm going to drag from the bottom up. The trouble is if you start selecting that you'll lose column A. The way to make sure you have both columns selected is to hold down either the control key if you're using Windows or I believe the command key if you're using Mac. So I'm using a Windows machine, I'm going to press and hold control and then I'm going to click at the bottom of column E and drag up and it doesn't matter that I've dragged in different directions, the software will work out what I mean to do. So I've now got the angle selected and sign. Um, now you can either go to insert chart or there is a chart icon here uh, in the menu bar so you can click on that if you like. Um, in the, uh, sorry, toolbar buttons, uh, click on that and there you get your graph of the sine function. Okay, um, And you're going to need to do the same thing for cosine and tan. Uh, if you want to, you can put them into separate tabs. If you click on the three little dots in the corner, um, you can move to own sheet here. If you click on move to own sheet, it will create a new tab at the bottom of your screen um, and you can label that sine, do another one for cosine and another one for tan. Okay. If you want to, you can play around formatting these graphs, getting them looking nice, setting the axes up and everything, uh, and make them more presentable. Um, but you should be able to produce three graphs, um, one for sine, one for cosine, and one for tan. And that is the objective of the task. And in the next lesson, we're going to look at the properties of these graphs, what they tell us, and how they can help us understand these functions and apply them in problem-solving situations.